My name is Chris Cravens. I'm the uh, owner of Tier 2. I'm here with uh, Joe Hook. He's our Director of Performance Strategies. And uh, just a little bit about us. Um, I'm an eight-year Marine veteran. Um, so obviously you'll see that with some of the obstacles here, military-esque uh, type things. And then uh, Joe's going to give you some good techniques and platforming and, and safe ways to go about it. Um, he'll give you a little bit about his background. And uh, we're looking forward to being out here with you today. I'm Joe Hook, the Director of Performance Strategies with Tier 2. I have some experience working with some companies, uh, mainly working with professional athletes and uh, high-level military operators. Uh, basically what we're going to do is give kind of a, a reason or rhyme for techniques you're going to use that might be a little bit more advantageous to your biomechanics, uh, help you prevent injury, but also increase your performance because everybody's right. trying to get a better time. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy this, uh, these videos and, and learn something. Let's ride. at the, uh, what will be called the sternum checker. Uh, this is actually an obstacle that we help build here at Tier 2. Uh, we're going to go over how to kind of avoid injuring yourself with this. There's a reason why it's called the sternum checker, and we definitely don't want you checking your sternum. So we're going to go over how to do this obstacle correctly. Uh, one thing that we want to always go over on this kind of obstacle, you have to commit to the obstacle. You have to go up and say, hey, I'm going to go over the top one to get over it. If you kind of come up and mentally stop, that's where you're going to have a lot of problems. This is all about momentum and finding a way to carry your momentum through over to the other side. So commit to it first, say, hey, I'm going to go over it, and that'll give you a chance, okay? We're going to kind of use this log as, as a chance to demonstrate our techniques and what we're looking for. Uh, when you come up, the first thing you're going to do is step over this log, come up to this log, and get to a double leg stance right here. This is going to enable me to kind of load into a jumping stance. You're still going to have plenty of momentum coming from that log, but you're going to be able to load up into here be able to get a good platform to jump off of. When you jump up into that log is where a lot of the problems happen. That's why this obstacle is called the sternum checker. Most people don't commit to the jump. Most people don't get a good platform to jump off of. Maybe they slip and they wind up landing into their sternum. Very uncomfortable. You know, you could even do so much as bruise your sternum. That'll kind of put you out of the rest of the race. So you don't want to do that. What you want to do is get that good, stable jumping platform and shoot for the log. So when we, when we say shoot for the log, let's go ahead and jump up find the log with our hands and really press it away. So as my, my momentum's coming through, I want to press away and treat this almost like a pommel horse because then I can kind of control my body over the log. So we have kind of a couple options while you go through here. If I've got the log and I'm going to press away, put myself to a good shoulder position, I can kind of come up and land into my abdominal cavity. I'm easing my blow by finding the log and kind of easing my way in with my shoulders. This way I can kind of got, uh, get a stable platform wrap around, come up top, and land back as I go over top of this obstacle. You have another option. If you've got a lot of momentum coming through here, you can find the log, push away, straddle, and then come back up over top and land backwards. Or if you're a real stud, you're going real fast, if you have a lot of momentum, you can find the log, jump, press away, and go all the way over top, almost like it's a fence if you kind of have that uh, uh, capability to get to the other side. We go into our land, we always want to get back into our hips. That's the goal. That's why we suggest landing with your face facing towards the course behind you. Landing backwards is going to, with that momentum, pull you back into your hips. It's almost kind of a, a kind of like a, a safeguard might, might block some bad movement for your knees to come forward. So landing back to your hips safens that blow. Also, it's going to slow you down. Worst case scenario, you land back in your hips, you do a little back roll, you're back up and you keep going. If you look over to the course down here, it gets pretty treacherous pretty quick. So that's what we suggest to you guys. If you want to, go ahead and come out and practice this. You can contact the guys at Mug Guts and Glory. We'd be more, ha more than happy to accommodate you. And we look forward to seeing you out on race day. Hey. 